In this video, we are going to be creating DIY floss drops. Hi, my name is Marie and this is the Caterpillar Cross Stitch channel. If you're new here, welcome! This channel is all about cross stitching and tutorials, so remember to hit like, subscribe and the notification bell to never miss a tutorial from us again. Remember to also follow us on our socials like Instagram and Facebook for even more stitchy inspiration. This video is going to be all about these fancy floss drops that you can make yourself at home. I am going to be showing three different versions from the simplest to the most elaborate way of creating these. This video is suitable particularly for people who enjoy going the extra mile and who enjoy creating pretty things to go with their stitching. If this is not you, it's absolutely fine. Head over to our website and get yourself some lovely bobbins so that you don't have to create any of these at all. But if this does sound like you and you enjoy creating things from paper, you enjoy crafting, please join me in creating these beautiful floss drops. Let's get crafting. Let's take a look at making very quick and basic floss drops. We will need craft paper tags. I bought these on Amazon. A binder ring two different hole punches and small stickers. When I have a new project, I just take the number of paper tags that match the number of colors in my project and I punch it so that I create floss drops out of these very simple craft tags. Then to finish the floss drop off, I usually, it really doesn't matter, I just usually find the wrong side of the craft paper and I use one sticker. I put the sticker on the back and I use just a pen to write on it. So let's just say I would write a symbol, uh, this sort of symbol, and I will write that it's a 310. This would obviously be on my uh, list of uh, flosses and symbols uh, that I will get with my project. And that is really it. There's nothing more, uh, there's nothing more complicated to it than that. So I would just go and create uh, these floss drops as fast as I can really. These, like I said, they are very, very basic, very basic. So I wouldn't worry about them that much. Um, I don't usually reuse these. They're not very pretty. They're just really functional um, and um, really easy to make. Like I'm able to make these for the whole project maybe in three minutes or something. You can see that it goes really quickly. Once I'm done, I put them on my floss drop in usually in numerical order. When I feel like it, I am also going to uh, add a little just paper that I punch, maybe like a bit of a a harder paper, not just the printer paper, a little bit of a tougher, you know, a little bit of heavier GSM. Then I will punch it here and I will just write what the project is just really quickly. And sometimes I write uh, my fabric on the back of this, um, just in case I've changed the fabric, it's not, not called for, so that I remember later on. Um, and this is just this is just because sometimes I take my threads out uh, of the project bag and just to make sure that I know uh, which project do these uh, belong to. I never know if I get a project with similar threads just to save myself some time trying to match it with the correct project. And that's really it. The basic, the most basic floss drops that you can get um, and ready 
to be stickered and uh, put on your floss. Now let's look at something a little bit more fancy. I love these. To make these, you will need slightly larger craft paper tags. For comparison, this is the size that I was using uh, for the basic ones. This is the size I use for these. The only reason is that I use a nice paper to cover these and I want a little bit of that paper to show. You will again need a binder ring, our hole punches, some glue and some pretty paper. And again, our stickers for good measure. To make these, I just take the craft paper tags. I can't find the right and wrong side. They look quite, quite nice from both ends. Um, and I take some nice papers. Um, you can get like a mix of papers on Amazon or just find something at home, uh, maybe a, a gift bag or uh, wrapping paper or anything that just looks pretty that, that you like the look of. And I will take my glue, I will take my craft paper tag and I will just put the glue on it. Let me see if I can not be clumsy about this. Cover it as thoroughly as you can, especially on the edges. And then I literally just pop it on here. I only glue it one-sided. The other side I use for sticker and as previously uh, shown, I will just write my symbol and the number of the DMC floss or a name of a fancy floss on the back. So I don't feel like um, I need to cover the other side as well, but if you want it, by all means, um, uh, do cover the other side as well. Once it's thoroughly glued through, I'm just going to take my, it's like, it's called Canary Japan. Um, they are just small sort of paper precision um, scissors. Um, you could, you could, I guess, use some disused embroidery scissors for this. Um, the reason you need precision ones is that the tags have got these corners where it would be awkward to get with, uh, with large paper scissors. And what you can also use for this is an exacto knife. It's one of the crafting knives that you would just use to trace around, around this. I don't have any particular system in this. I just, I just cut it the way it seems most practical. Okay, clean off the edges and that's it. I love the way this looks. It is so easy, but at the same time, I think it makes the floss drop like really fun. Um, the next thing I would do as previously, I would just punch a hole for the ring binder and I would punch a hole on the bottom as well. So I am going to punch one a little bit on the side and one right next to it for that small leftover thread we have discussed and that's really it um that's my nice fancy little uh easy uh, to make floss drop done 
I would just take the sticker again and put it on the back, put my symbol and a thread number in there and I'm done. Isn't this very pretty? Um, if, if you obviously enjoy this sort of thing, um, this could be made like really in a coordinated manner with uh, the project you are <clears throat> creating. So perhaps you could find some nice Christmas paper for your Christmas stitching. You could find scary paper for Halloween. Uh, you could find these, you could, you know, use these flowery papers for anything that has got flowers on it. I just really like the way it sort of gives you the opportunity to coordinate with a project, especially if it's a large project and it's a project that may stay with you for a longer time, maybe a year or two years even, or even longer sometimes. The last type of floss drop that I am going to show you in terms of DIY um, is a floss drop that is not from uh, an existing tag, but we are going to be punching through the whole uh, floss drop. So let's look at how we can create something like that. We will need paper. This is not a printer paper. It's a heavier GSM, so it should be should be relatively firm. Um, something like something that you would use in your arts and crafts class. Um, then we need a puncher for the tag itself. We are again going to need our punchers as previously to create the holes. We are going to be using the same papers as we've just done with the craft paper tag and we are going to take our um, glue that we have still open for the previous one. So let's take a look at this super, super easy process. So I'm just going to put my glue on my flower paper. I'm going to glue it on here. It's just paper against paper, so there is no need to worry that it's not going to be adhesive enough. It's really quite, quite good. Um, and then I'm taking my tag and um, I'm trying... Oh, we can actually do more out of this. Oh, that's fantastic. So I am going to punch it. And again, you can see me um, turning it over because if I was doing it like this, I literally have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, to be honest. So I am turning it upside down and I am making the punch. There we go. And I can see that I've got enough for two of these actually. So there we go. And that's it. I've got two, I think, really quite lovely floss drops that are white on the back as opposed to the craft paper. I personally really love craft paper, but not everybody has to love it. So this is a bit of a different finish. Um, so I am going to, again, create um, the floss drops with the sort of waste, or oh, not waste, but started thread, I guess, hole. Um, that is absolutely not something you have to do. And if I wasn't doing this, I would just do this in the middle. Um, just a little bit of warning, like you have to be quite, if you do do this small hole, you have to be quite careful, I guess, so that when you're handling it, it doesn't tear through over here. Because this is glue and it, you know, it will be a little bit wet, I wouldn't use it absolutely straight away. Um, I would give it, to all of these that, that we glue, I would give them maybe a day or two to just settle down a little bit 
and if you see that there is any you know maybe ever so slight bending or something like that I would put some weight on it maybe a couple of books or anything heavy that you have got just to weigh it down a little bit so that you've got nice flat floss drops. I would again take my trusted price sticker on the back and I would write the symbol and the number. The reason I'm using these is that, you know, I would definitely reuse any floss drops that, you know, still look okay. Like uh, these I have used for a project already and I have just stick it over what was previously written on there. And once I'm finished using them again, I would again sticker over it. And that way I don't have to keep on creating new and new and new and new floss, uh, floss drops. I can just keep on reusing the ones that I have made already and I can just sticker over this and start anew. So just to recap from the simplest to the kind of most complicated one, here's just craft paper tags with punched holes and a sticker on the back. Here's craft paper tags that I have sti uh, that I have glued over with a nice decorative paper and these are created from a white crafting paper, heavier paper with a uh, nice decorative paper glued against, uh, against them and then punched through. This is absolutely meant for people who enjoy doing this kind of thing. Not everybody enjoys uh, this sort of process. Somebody just wants to start stitching and that's it and don't want to lose time doing these things. And that's absolutely fine. Everybody prefers different things. Everybody enjoys different things. And, uh, you know, this can be part of the process if you enjoy it and doesn't have to be if you don't. If you don't, uh, just remember that we've got these sort of rainbow um, bobbins that can be used as floss drops as well you can uh, put your floss through here and then just wind them wind the floss once you're ready with it and put it in your project bag these are on our website including with the ring so completely up to you what sort of preparation how quick or how complicated do you prefer to make it I hope you liked it. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on creating these pretty little matching floss drops at home. Let me know if you enjoyed it or if you would do anything differently in the comments. I'd love to know. If you're interested in the rainbow bobbins or any of our wonderful projects to create your floss drops for, please head over to our website www.caterpillarcrossstitch.com. Remember to also sign up to our newsletter, aka VIB Stitch Club, in the description below. When you sign up, you get a 10% discount for your first order in our shop and also a PDF with eight free patterns directly into your inbox. Remember to also join our wonderful Facebook group with over 15,000 amazing stitchers sharing their tips and tricks and love of stitching. And that is it from us at Caterpillar Cross Stitch this week. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week.